250 pounds, but he will be indeed relatively dwarfed here by Big Gan McGee. McGee wanting to use his reach advantage against the Texas Crazy Horse. He wrestled at the University of Iowa, which has a powerhouse wrestling squad coached by the legendary Dan Gable, who was a great motivator and communicator. And Herring again will be allowed the four-point attack, even though the weight difference is 15 kilograms or more. Nice left there. Right away going to and the we have a weight difference of over 15 kilos in this bout. Oh, yes. Right away to the clinch. Boss underhook in there by McGee. Oh, nice right, right hand right. by Herring gets McGee's attention. And he got a nice left hook. He stunned him with that. A nice right low kick. And mixing it up early is Heath Herring. Upstairs, downstairs. Oh. And again, that low kick. He's working the legs again. But McGee seems relaxed. He's wanted to fight here in Japan for a long time as Gan McGee misses oh, the high ground house and Herring almost hiking. countering. <laughs> Backing up is he's got McGee. To keep, he's got to keep his eyes open. Don't look to the ground. There, nice hoop. Right swinger. Just missed. Can't shoot throw. Oh, that was good there. He should throw his left more to uh, try to keep Heath away from him. Both of them in the orthodox stance. A nice right hand underneath catches Herring. McGee now scoring as they continue. Just feeling each other out here in the early going of this survival match at Pride Fighting Championships Inferno. Yo, and another, another right hook. Oh. In his corner, McGee's corner, imploring him to keep his hand up and his guard definitely low. Yeah, he's got a really good high kick too. I mean, even though uh, Big Gan uh, is, is, is a, a six inches taller, he can actually hit him without right high kick. You, uh, you watch. McGee, of course, wanting to gauge the distance, maybe wanting to go to the jab, setting up a takedown. After all, he is a wrestler. But right now, it's all Heath Herring taking it to Gan McGee with those spurts of strikes. Now another inside leg kick delivered by Herring. Yeah, again, that with his hand there on his hips, he can jab whatever he wants. It's never going to be a knockout kick. Uh, punch. That's a nice knee yeah. by McGee. That was and good. He has Herring on the ropes. Ooh. Now into a tie clinch goes McGee and delivers some knees and a left hook by McGee. A nice sequence there by Gan McGee. Very good. He should uh, try more to use the left jab or the jab, make it a strong punch, but get actually a uh, left straight instead of a jab. Wanting to uh, ignore the power punch there. And McGee, go from there. McGee doesn't look nervous whatsoever, making his debut here at Pride Fighting Championships. He throwing, of course, the veteran. Goes inside one more time, and McGee just backs up. He should throw right low, get more. He, uh, and again, Gan should throw the left more but not from the position that he holds his hand in now. Well, with a six inch disadvantage, Herring would be well advised to get on the inside, close the gap, but there you see McGee keeping him at bay with a kick. Herring scores there, downstairs with the inside low leg kick. Hand up, chin down. Chin down. Ooh. Straight ahead goes Herring. Now we're into the underhooks. McGee, McGee almost attempting there a knee with a tie clinch, and it ended up being a front kick that missed. Ooh, both uh, both had the their same idea there. Shins. That's going to hurt later on after the fight. It's a very tentative start here to this survival match between Americans Heath Herring and Gan McGee making his debut. Here at Inferno. Scores inside does McGee again. Herring employing the strategy boss, just putting his head down and like the uh, bull, just going straight ahead when he does elect to attack. Yeah, he shouldn't do that. He should keep his eyes on because his opponent. Because you're right. That could easily invite a knee right up the gut and on the chin. Yeah, plus you don't see what your opponent's going to throw. I mean, if you look at the ground, uh, his feet... That's why I, I mentioned the inviting a disaster with that kind of a strategy. Yep, here you saw a little piece of sportsmanship. He kicked a little bit too high heat, almost in the groin, but they touched gloves. That's what he nice should do more. Delivered by Herring, and again, over a period of time, they will begin to add up with the taller fighter taking away 
All of his power, that's where the power is derived from, is in the legs. And he attacks his lead leg, does Herring. And there is again another attack there. This one blocked by Gan McGee. Yeah, again, she would throw more uh, double punch. That was a good left there from uh, Heath. Again, you throw more double punches. Same as Heath, they have to do. Yeah, they're single same shooting thing. right now. They're yeah. not doubling up. Doubling up to make triple shots. You see, punch kick. That's a good thing to do. He should do the same thing. We're halfway through round number one. And right now, it remains a stand up battle, although not a lot of action. They are intermittently attacking each other Gan McGee and Heath Herring. Probably fans here, as their corners probably as well, would like them to show maybe a little more tenacity, boss. Yeah, everybody wanted to see it, of course, but uh, you know what the heavyweight is? is one shot is going to be on the button. There's a the nice one. knee and a kick by. Gan McGee now has him in the guillotine position. Standing up, and easy escape for Herring. Herring, when he backed off, he had his hands up, so that means he's perfectly in shape. He knows exactly what he's doing. Gan is loading off with a left hook. Oh, right, There's straight another left hook. Wow. nice combination by McGee, the right and the left, and now going, finishing with a triple there, left, right, and a kick. Yep, that's, he's doing really good at that. All oh, single leg, takedown by Heath Herring, and they, for the first time in this bout, we're going to the guard. Half well, butterfly guard. He's going to go right to the half guard. And now there's a closed half guard by McGee. Oh, he's going to get out. Looking to watch out for the leg lock here. You have to watch out. Achilles lock, perhaps. Attempt, but no. Heath Herring doing a good job. May actually... He may lose his position now. Yep. Yes, he does. Side mount, not there, good. by McGee. This is not good. Now north-south north south position. Not Will he rain in the all. knees? Oh. Yes, he does. He should get out now. He should turn on his body, sit up on his knees. This is exactly what he's doing, and get out. McGee giving him... Oh, he's got a soccer kick in. There's a soccer kick. And back to the feet they go. Wow. So nice... Sequence the right of moves there on the ground, and uh, again, McGee and Heath Herring back on their feet. Nice combination, body and then upstairs by McGee. Yeah, that's exactly what he should do. It's exactly what Heath should do, too. Don't you know, go for a single shot, a single kick, some things. No, follow it up. Another low kick by Herring. No damage whatsoever to Gan McGee. McGee with the reach advantage, of course, and he is gauging that distance right now with that right jab. Herring yeah, there right with straight. an overhand right. The right straight left hook really favors McGee here. He should maybe go to the body with the right straight and left hook to the head. That low kick hurt, but it's dangerous to set it up without. Nice Ooh. brawl by McGee, a kind of weak shot Not there this. by Herring. Now he gets his back. Herring looking for the switch. He's going there for reverse figure four. He this. Looking for the inverted Kimura is Herring and uh, McGee right now just tapping him with those right hands to the body. He should start throwing knees. Not a lot of power behind those shots, but again, staying busy is McGee as uh, Herring and deep from the uh, turtle position there looking for what you mentioned, boss, the inverted Kimura. He's going to pull it out. No, it's not working. McGee's corner telling him that he needs to improve his position and he would be wise to get the full back of Heath Herring. Pull that arm out. Yeah, the referee's going to put him on the feet, I think, in about 30 seconds. Nothing happens. Would be really doing little in terms of trying to get the, now he's working at he should releasing his arm. right knees now he can show uh, throw the right knees to the upper thigh of um, Heath Herring busy working on that left arm from underneath while McGee you're right he should try the knee attack and there was a left we're in the final minute of the opening round he has his back now does McGee there's a series of rights to the face. Hammer fist dropped by McGee. Yeah, Heath is still looking for the Kimura there, the first figure four, I call it. Looks like Herring has uh, got a laceration on his face as well. Yep. Just on the bridge of the nose, perhaps. Uh, can't really tell from here where the 
Well, maybe even under his eye. Yeah, it looks like his eye. On, around his eye area, boss. Yep, I think so too. I think we'll check it. It's 30 seconds. He's got loose now. Hearing the fans responding as they he should fall away. Right. And he should attempt. lock the legs up now. The legs of Dan McGee, if he's going to pull it out, he's got to lock him up. Otherwise, yes, he's doing it right now. Well, you have nope, enough time, no, however. No. Now he should explode it out. He should explode it out as hard as he can. Use all the power. Oh! And you see Herring's reaction. A little frustrated. Didn't have uh, the opportunity to secure that uh, reverse Kimura. No. And uh, the end of round number one as Herring now will be tended to. There you see Core Hammers with the towel and the... There we I go. Her, but we do know that Herring, I believe, wears contact lenses, does he not, when he uh, fights uh, the bus? No, what Gore Hammers is doing right now, he's, he's closing the, 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 the gap right, here with the glue. But it, I don't know about the Herring, context. No, I, I, I found one fight that I watched that he had trouble with contact lens, I thought. But uh, here, right now, they're just working on the cut below the right eye of Herring. Let's see there here, the right hook. Didn't really connect, but he had a few real good... Oh, that left was really good. And it's, uh, that right low kick, you know, you should keep doing this. But again, they're going to show some combinations of Gan too, I'm sure. Through that right straight left hook, really good. You see, he's looking down while he's punching. You can't do that to, the, to uh, abstract your uh, opponent so that he looks down and thinks you're going to hit low and then you hit high. But it invites all kinds of counter attacks from your opponent. And uh, Herring now being repaired in the corner and uh, we'll see what happens in round number two. Gan McGee, meanwhile, definitely very relaxed in round number one, picking his spots, delivering some scoring combinations. But again, they need to pick up the intensity here. Yep, for sure. Uh, although I thought it was a, it, it was a, it was good, a good round, but uh, definitely I think the fans here in Japan and at home want to see a lot more, especially out of these two from the United States. They know what they're capable of. And they're hoping for a throwdown here in round number two. Okay, now I think he looks like to be in a better shape, but you can never tell. And of course, no. McGee will try to exploit that uh, cut below the right eye of Herring. Try to capitalize on that. And even though it's below the eye, boss, if it swells up, it could cause a problem. It's not above the eye where the blood will flow into the eye, but it's still in a very uh, curious position there for Herring, so he'll try to uh, avoid any contact there. There we have the body lock attempt by McGee. Yeah, he should try to get his right hand underhooked here under the armpit, under the left armpit of Gan, because this is not a good position for you. Because if uh, Gan is going to lock his hands up, okay. But he smiles there at that uh, right hand by Harry. Usually that means it hurt. I don't know if it did in that instant. No, I, there was nothing there, I think. Another block there by McGee on the inside leg kick attempted by Herring. Yeah, that's why I always say. Oh. Overhead right. And that knocks out the uh, mouthpiece oh. of McGee. McGee says, okay, let's go. Bring it on. Wow. That was a wild overhand right. Yeah. Knocking the mouthpiece from McGee's mouth, but it uh, didn't look like it did much damage, though. More of a visual than any uh, real damage done there. Yeah, I think she did. There was nothing. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been so fast in picking it up and put it back in. He should work. Um, definitely go to the body. He should. Those low kicks are hurting, you see? He's already lumping his leg. It looks to me like they're hurting, so he should continue doing this. Okay. Kick attempt there by... McGee, McGee just really kind of standing there long, but Herring doing all kinds of fainting and really just uh, staying active at a bit of a frenetic stance there by Herring, which again expends energy as well. 
Yep, and he is still doing the same. Every time he throws punches, he looks down. He should, he should look at his opponent, you know, and make a three shot. You know, yeah, exactly. Only able to really deliver the single shots is the Texas Crazy Horse McGee with that reach advantage with the left. Doing a good job of keeping Heron at bay and uh, can pull there now into a front face lock looking for the guillotine, but it has the arm trap there as well, boss. Yep, and here we go, knees to the body, uh, to the leg. This is a really smart thing to do, and you saw that McGee pushed him away. It could be, could be, I say, the sign that he feels the low kicks. Every time Herring now goes for a kick, it's met directly by the counterattack upstairs by McGee. Perfect. He's out, getting out of the corner, and McGee's corner was shouting, don't let him get nope. out of the corner. I want him to cut off the ring, of course, yep. having the height advantage, and keep Herring corralled, if you will. Keep that crazy horse in McGee's pen. Two minutes left, right straight. He should throw it up more. It's been a battle, really, of single shots. Yep. Not a lot of them scoring. Again, very tentative, Herring and McGee. There's a high roundhouse blocked by Herring. There's a right hand that scores by Herring. Shoot followed up with the right low kick. He, they both really should turn it up a notch now. Both of them accomplished wrestlers, although they have maintained a stand-up battle here at Inferno. McGee's corner telling him he has to get off first. He's been effective with the counterattack, though, throughout this bout. He's doing good, you know. He's got the right straight, left hook, and left hook, right straight. And, he, and it's, actually, it's working good, you know. He should attack more and keep looking. Herring, meanwhile, his MO is to take away that lead leg where all the power is derived from. If he can take away the lead leg, boss, it'll be easier to chop down the Sequoia known as McGee. And perhaps Herring will be able to capitalize. Now along the ropes, however, full body lock there by McGee. And he puts him in the corner and maybe will go to the knee attack once again. Yeah, a break again, thank God for that. Into the final 30 seconds of round number two. Herring and McGee. In a battle of single shots here. We'll have to see if anyone wants to turn it up and finish the round in a flurry. He should keep going now. Now, Herring becoming a little more aggressive into the clinch. Underhook, and there is the end of round number two. Herring, a little more activity there in the final 15 seconds, but really not able to accomplish a lot, boss. No, absolutely not. It's... it's um... He looks down um, every time he punches. I mentioned it like uh, now 40 times, so there's so the people know at home. I'm sorry, but you know you should keep going. Make a left, right, straight. Give him the liver shot or something. Make a three combination and finish off with a kick. And while McGee has been effective with the counter attack, I think his corner, as we heard, wants him to uh, get off first. You know, like uh, initiate some offense, and uh, yep. that's what he's going to have to do in round number three if he wants to uh, secure the victory here. I believe. Yeah, and there you're is a right. contact. There it is. You're Thank absolutely you. right. Now, let's see. Low kick. See, those low kicks are good. And that can be dangerous, actually, fighting with contact lenses like that. I mean, they can... I always they fought can, with them. Really? And they never, like, uh, I lost a lot of them. cut or... Many, you know they what can't I mean? cut. They can't no, no, cut. but when they fall out and... Yeah, I know. It's the worst because well, sometimes when they fall out... Tagged. No, then you've got uh, your vision gets all screwed up because right. one eye... Sees the other That's side. Right. We've seen this uh, before with Heath Herring. He picks up his mouthpiece. Yeah, that was the uh, moment of levity for the fans here at Inferno. As they, uh, that was a great shot. Ball. That eye is starting to swell. That's what we had talked about as well, boss. It wasn't over the eye, but it, where it is, it's going to swell, and it, uh, it's almost swollen shut right now. It's going to cause all kind of problems for Heath Herring in round number three. It'll be interesting to see if Dan McGee can capitalize and put Herring out here at Inferno. Yep. That right eye Come on. is almost swollen shut. Yep. Now, sorry boss, time for round number three and uh, 
We'll hope to see a lot more activity, but for Heath Herring, he is going to be even at more at a disadvantage now, not only with the height, but fighting really with just one eye. Watch this. He's going to turn it up a notch. I know him. He always does. He did those last two fights, last round. There's Herring. He knows he's a wounded he animal goes. and taking it to McGee right off the bat. Those overhand rights. The left jab followed by the overhand right now. He's got to pull himself. He's got to go for side choke. It almost looked like a standing side choke. Side choke. Push him away now. Push him away. Push his, pull your arm out. That's it, but that's what he should do. And attack again. You know, a wounded animal is uh, the most dangerous kind. And now Heath Herring definitely turning it up. Oh, and again, he's out. Left. And again, and now, now it's Herring again. straight ahead. McGee turning his head. Go for the body. He should go for the body. One with body shot. One left to the body. Now to the body. That's the wild does. lefts and rights by Herring. A percentage of them connecting. Enough to gain the attention of McGee. McGee does a good job with that left hook, though, to back Herring up. And out of the corner goes Dan McGee. He should have gone to the body. With somebody who turns away, hit him to the solar plexus. Left hooks, bang. Take the air out of him. There's a He's long, tired. Leg kick. I was just going to say, expending all kinds of energy was Herring during that flurry. And now McGee looking to capitalize along the ropes. Full body lock there by Herring. He should get out. Herring should pull himself out and do, do the same thing over and over again. And McGee, on the other hand, has to get busy when in the body lock in the clinch. Has to start delivering those knees. Oh, that was a good there. See, look oh, right here, boss. Budget. What's he waiting for? I know. I, no, I, I don't know. He's, he should throw the knees, but you know, fatigue. Well, I, the busier of the two fighters has been Herring, of course, Scan McGee. Look at that. Man. He should keep going. He just should keep going. High kick there delivered by Herring. Doesn't really score. Now McGee seems to be employing the simple strategy of a left and a right going inside, but McGee not doing enough to capitalize on his advantages in this belt, boss. The height no. advantages and the injury incurred to the right eye of crazy horse Heath Herring. Yeah, he should go to the body more. Heath Herring, but right straight and left straight to the body. He would bring the hand down, then go top to the head. To the McGee is just content to clinch, drawing the ire of his own corner. They want him to get busier now. And Herring doing a good job of, there's a right coming out of the clinch. You see, he should keep doing this. He's got about three minutes left, I guess. Keep looking. He doesn't look if he comes in. You can maybe hear the corner yelling at McGee to throw punches again. Now it's Herring again with the underhook. McGee. Looking for the body lock, but now again they just face each other. It's been all stand up here. Herring. Should throw right low kick here. If he turns away to the right, you should throw right low kick. You know the strategy should be fight to win, not fight to survive. And right now, I don't know. Ooh, that was a good body a shot. The knee missed, the body shot was a hit. Yes. But it appears to me that McGee, well, now he's trying to turn it up there. Left and right, now he's showing some aggression. Yeah, exactly. The corner saying, work, don't sit there. And uh, really, Dan McGee not taking advantage of the tools that God gave him. And now he begins to land with the rights. And Heath Herring feels the impact of those shots. Now oh, Herring with the right of his own. Back. Now in a tie clinch, oh, McGee, Herring is able to slip out of it. This is what that wild right does, McGee, back into close quarters. There's Herring with the right hand, and again, it's up to Herring to get inside and go to work. Now a right, and man, uh -oh. Heath Herring, his face looks like a mess, but boy, is this guy a warrior. Okay, we got one minute one left in the fight. Let's go left. finish. And I do believe we are in for a thrilling finish. The crowd here at Osaka Castle Hall encouraging both fighters. Harry now go, the left go, of the Harry has McGee rocked. Right hand oh, left hook to the chin. But McGee right. has a very strong chin. Able to take those shots. We are seeing a throw down here in the final half minute of this pounded inferno. To finish 30 seconds. Who can finish this in the 30 seconds? Last 30 seconds. Come on, guys. Herring and McGee running on fumes. Herring showing.
showing that never say die attitude. Magina hanging on with the clinch. Will he come in with a knee? No. Herring backs up. This is almost like a rugby movie. It is a battle, no doubt. Left again and right inside into the tie clinch, but that is not where McGee wants to be. He has to start reading in the, those knees, and the bout is over. And a great last minute, minute and a half of that third round. Boss, I think the Texas Crazy Horse Heath Herring, even though he looks worse for wear, did enough to win this bout. I think so too. Gan McGee. Looked okay in the opening round. Let's go back to some of this action, boss. Wow, that was the right hook. Started off, you see, and now when he turns away, just give a left hook to the body. Left hook to the body. Full power. Give a right low kicks, right knees to the body. Uh, to, the, to the legs. You know, McGee with absorbed all the punishment. Oh, he, that one hurt right hook. And there you see some of his offense. <laughs> yeah. But it just seemed like, like his corner was saying, he would not capitalize on the opportunities given him. While Herring, knowing he's the wounded animal, knowing that he's in danger, Whoa. kept doing this. Yeah, but that, that left hook was a hard, yeah, left uppercut hook, I call it. That, that had impact and it didn't flinch. Yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how this bout is adjudicated. Let's await the official decision from the judges. Judge Kobayashi, peace. Judge Arachi, peace. Wow, be a split decision. 